Uh, hello everyone, it's really late and we're playing more high soft friends and because I can And I will play more friends him. So yeah, we're playing more. Uh, that's just the gist of it. That's just how it goes. We're gonna do we got like we got friends. We got and then we're gonna we're gonna close Mandy, we're gonna start and then we finish volume one, and we're gonna go to volume two. Yeah, strange world. Ever since your class on the hostile planet, you've been desperate. Okay. We're gonna, okay, if we're gonna go in order, if we're gonna start with Amicia. That's what we're gonna start with. Okay. Low, what lights beyond wildly, yondly, yondly, weirdly organic architecture breaks? A small figure approaches. Oh! Hello? Okay, the music's nice. Oh, right, let's let's give them a voice. Oh, oh my gosh, you are so. So far, you've swallowed quite a few insults in regards to your looks and intelligence level. You really aren't the type to let the shallow opinions of others let you down. But it's been kind of a rough day. You brace yourself. Cute. Oh, oh. <laughs> she gives you a sweet, sincere smile. I never see anything like you. It's giving all sorts of new ideas. Blade. Blade, you hope some of those ideas are about friendship. Now that you have a taste of it, you are hungry for more. You take a stumbling step forward and your ribs remind you that although the potential of camaraderie is enough to improve your mental health, it can't cure acute injuries. Oh, you don't look so good. Come inside. I'm looking for new contributors. Contributors? Could you mean friendship contributors? No. That's dumb. Maybe she runs some sort of alien newspaper and just wants you on staff. She looks a little young for that, but what the heck do you know about alien management hierarchy? You follow her to a nearby building, and now that you're looking for your ravenous hunt for companionship, you notice that you wander into kind of an upscale part of town. There's a lot less garbage and people collapsed in the street. You see one of those spiky robot things, but it's washing a window instead of shooting a laser at a group of children. <laughs> if that's not high class, you don't know what is. Before you follow her inside, she turns around the threshold, blocking your way. Hey, real quick, you don't happen to be an artist, do you? Uh, actually, matter of fact, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, no, close menu. Um. 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 um I don't know. Uh, sure, tell her yes. It isn't your whole deal, but you've been known to dabble. Oh. I see how it is. We well, aren't gonna sneak out any trade secrets out of me. Goodbye. Oh, she's giving me the finger. Oh God. Okay, let's let's just, let's just do that again. Tell her no. You never had a knack for it. Oh, good. Friendship between arts can be fraught. Much better to just keep things between arts and art appreciators. That way, no one can be can get jealous. The girl's smile widens even further, and you feel an really a rush of joy. Have you finally found someone who isn't a total fucking maniac? <laughs> and she brought up friendship without you having to mention it at all. She puts a spring in your step. Or it says as much of a spring as possible with a broken arm and misaligned torso. <laughs> Amicia leads you into an elevator with buttons labeled in spiky letters that make absolutely no sense to you. You realize that probably nothing is ever going to make sense to you ever again. That's okay. Your hierarchy of needs has adjusted recently. Your new friend, you are jumped... You are jumping the gun with this descriptor, but you're feeling seriously good about this encounter. Stands in the corner of the elevator, wringing her claws. I wish I knew I was gonna have company. I would have cleaned up. It's been a while since I've met anyone new. You reassure her that whatever disaster her house is, it can't be any worse than some places you've already seen here. Although you kind of get what she means, she's wearing an artist's smock that's covered in splashes of paint. Actually, it doesn't really look like paint, but it could be anything else, could it? It's every color of the rainbow. Oh, I guess. You know it's for you to guess what it is. The elevator door slides down a step into a space that you were relieved to find is totally recognizable. A table overflows with messy palettes and brushes, clammy jars of water and sponges. Several easels stand beside the windows to catch the light of the two moons and a number of canvases lean against the wall turned so you can't see what's on them. First things first. Amisa brings you over to a wall screen that looks more high-tech than anything you have on your now-defunct spaceship, tapping away at a series of unreadable symbols. She then indicates you should take off your sling. 
Here, go ahead and stick it in there. She seems to want you to put your injured arm into a large hole in the wall, which you do. Because you are sure your new friend has your best interests at heart. The hole shrinks down like a blood pressure cuff, sending bolts of agony through through you. You want to yank your arm out, but you don't. But you don't. Even if it's broken, you still like having it attached to you. Instead, you shout a lot and thrash your other limbs around. Ah! <laughs> Calm down, you big wriggler. It's like you've never seen a medicalizer before. And if you don't stop moving, it won't work. Tears spell down your face, but you force yourself still. You used to be able to bear the pain, and you'll do it before your friend. She's looking at you, hopefully, and she's so delicate and pretty, almost angelic. You look at her face and tell yourself it's going to be okay. Finally, the hole releases you, and you pulled your arm back to find it completely healed. Oh, that's very nice. You can move your fingers. It doesn't even hurt anymore. Hey, things are looking up. See? I told you. <laughs> this is great. You're overwhelmed with the urge to celebrate. Uh Okay, uh, be chill about it. You think it meets it profusely, but you manage to keep it to your strictly verbal sort. Medical license are great. This is part of the city. It's great. You need to get more rich friends. <laughs> you tell her that this, throwing in a compliment of her studio while you're at it. See, this friendship stuff is easy. <laughs> I'm glad this, I'm glad you feel that way. You are obviously, obviously really strange and owned your social life. <laughs> but you don't seem to be a complete cultural idiot. Plus, I think it's really endearing how helpless and trusting you are. You laugh, slightly unnerved. You want to take that as a compliment, but after a recent encounter with another girl in blue, well, it all ended okay, and Amicia is so nice and friendly, and she keeps calling you cute, which you think is pretty generous of her considering what a disgusting mess you are at this point. Speaking of low bloods, what's your blood color? Just out of curiosity. Blood color? You're not really sure what she's talking about, but red? You tell her it's red, she looks a little disappointed. I got plenty of burgundy. Oh. Oh well. Good thing I have a delivery coming soon. Hey, do you think you can help me set a few things up before they get here? The they? Visitors, as in plural? As in multiple potential friends? Oh, how yes! You're all over that, especially considering your newly healed arm. You're anxious to display all the simple motor functions you can perform. Amicia gives you another radiant smile. You live for those smiles, man. That is so full of the glowing nectar of bromance. <laughs> but she's a girl. <laughs> Perfect. Let's do this. Work work always goes faster with two pairs of hands after all. Yes, absolutely it does. And even if she seems to mean her hands are pointing while she tells you where to put things, you're totally fine with that. Your ribs are still kind of killing you, but you swallow down the pain. You're getting pretty good at that. Too bad you can't stick your whole torso into that ma ma magical science fiction hole in the wall. Well, maybe you could, but not right now. Right now you got a friend to help. Uh, Amicia instructs you to clear all the furniture at the edge of the room and lay down a purple tarp. Apparently, tarps aren't blue on this planet. Amicia answers the phone and then buzzes open the uh, apartment door. She runs over to the elevator with a school of delight. They're here! Sorry, I'm so giggly about this. It's just been a while since I had any paints. Wait, paints? That's what's coming? Now that you think about it, there is something pretty crucial missing from this whole artist aesthetic she's got going on here. There aren't any paints. No tubes shipping color pots or pots with their tops. Particularly it's screwed. There aren't even any pencils. The elevator door opens and two trolls come in. They have pretty similar shaped horns and are almost the exact same height. Brothers? Do trolls have brothers? From their uniforms and the douchey swaggering way they look to get the idea they're some sort of law enforcement. That and the third troll in handcuffs are dragging between them. Oh no. Thank you guys. You always bring me the best materials. They don't say anything. They just bring the third troll to the center of the tarp and force him into a kneeling position. They then bow to Amicia and leave the way they came. <laughs> it doesn't look great. Even before Amicia runs out of the room and comes back with an X the size of her whole body. You aren't loving this. The troll on the tarp who trembles and bites back a sob, but they don't say anything or try to run. She isn't going to do what it looks like, is she? You can't bring yourself to believe that this cute little alien girl is going to straight up axe murder a dude right in front of you. Presumably to finger paint with their blood. You stagger something to this effect. Amicia laughs. Well, I don't use my fingers. I'm not a fucking animal. She considers for you for a few moments, tapping a claw against her mouth. I know. You can help me. I only really let one person help me with my work. And she's out of town right now. But you and I have a connection. You feel it too, right? 
You do. God, you do. You've been feeling it so much lately for everyone you meet. You thought you maybe have come across someone who will readily accept your platonic longings without putting you through the ringer first. You do want to help me, don't you? You do. You want more than anything. Amicia looks at you solemnly. Why don't you do the honors? She holds out her axe. I wouldn't offer this to just anyone, but I can tell how special you are. You're trembling. The troll and the tarp is also trembling, but unlike you, they seem to have accepted their fate. <laughs> Slowly and inevitably, you hold out your axe for the axe. What? You hold out your hand for the axe. Amizu gives it to you with a smile. God damn it, you forgot about your broken ribs and that you're a human and can't just pick up gigantic fucking axes with one hand. You drop it and bounce it away from you, like, way more than you think an axe should probably bounce. You look at Amizu from where you are doubled over with pain and shame. She laughs and scampers over to retrieve the axe once swinging it up without any signs of strain. She doesn't even have any visible muscles. What is this girl made of? How silly of me. You almost seemed culturally advanced there for a second. I thought you forgot about your natural inferiority. Here, I'll give you a second chance. You nod. Yes, please. A second chance that does not include committing gruesome murder. Actually, I just used change. But I got a better idea. Oh, oh God. What? You'll get what that meat wants you to do. You hesitate and Misa's smile gets even sweeter. Sweet like poison. Oh. You don't want to help me? The tarp crinkles underneath you as you kneel. You grasp patrol shoulders and mumble an apology. Then continue to say nothing. Amizia is sharpening her axe, which already looks pretty damn sharp. Hold on tight. You try, you really do? The problem is, you try to hold on tight, but at the same time, you try to drag the troll out of the way. Some buried instinct try to preserve life rising up within you. You're weak and injured, though, so all you end up doing is flopping both of you over to the side. Instead of coming down on the neck of the clean troll side, Amicia Ag glances off the troll's collarbone, mortally wounding them instead of killing them outright. And now you know they may have been begging for their life. They don't have a tongue. Oh god. So they can't beg, but they can sure yell and thrash and bleed all of green alien blood all over you and the tarp. God, there's so much blood. It's just spurting everywhere. Jesus Christ, you're such an idiot. Why can't you just commit? Now you're covered in dying alien, and so is everything else. Amicia, the work table most direly, the canvas is leaning against the wall. Amicia takes one look at them and lets out a wail of rage. I can't believe this! I let you into my hive, into my alive, I was planning to let you into my pusher. I thought you were going to be refined sophisticate. I see you're just a f f philistine. She gives you a shove towards the elevator, your ribs are screaming in the bleeding troll. You try to babble explanation. Forget it! I don't want to hear excuses! Chao is right. If you want something killed right, you have to kill them yourselves. You ride the elevator back down, kneeling in a pool of blood and failure. Oh no. I oh <laughs> terrible at murder. I can never get these right on the first try. I can never get it right. <sighs> you try to resist the urge to celebrate. You fail to resist the urge. <laughs> um you take a music by your tiny hands and twirl her around the studio, or you try to. You forgot about your busted ribs. You sure are doing that a lot. You let go of Amicia and carrying, careening into one of the tables. Thankfully, you're not the one covered in art supplies. You hit the corner and go down on the ready incredible sore ass. Damn, my ass is getting a lot of attention. Oh my god. This is what you get for acting like a huge fucking tool in front of your new friend. Are you okay? Was that some sort of ritualistic rite of healing I've never heard of before? You shrug against the floor. Misa leans down to pick you up in a bridal carry, despite the fact that she's about half your size. It makes your ribs hurt, but that doesn't- that doesn't nowadays- well, it doesn't nowadays. Misa lays you down on a weird lumpy couch. Are you sure you're okay? You look a little- She trails off to nothing. She's looking at your left arm, which has been draped over of yourself awkwardly to sort of try to hold your torso together. That color. At first you think the color of your skin, which is- different from her light gray. Then you think she made a truly fantastic buffet of bruises you've got going on. Then you realize that your prancing idiocy you managed to scrape the inside of your arm. Blood oozes sluggishly from the wound. Misa digits a finger through it, and you're half expecting her to put it in her mouth for this to become a whole cannibal situation. Well, since you aren't the same species, it wouldn't really be cannibalism, but still. No thanks. Instead, Misa just holds her fingers up, the drop of blood trembling to the tip. This color! I've never seen anything like it! She dashes off to one of her tables, pulling over a sketchbook and dragging her figure down on it. Your blood... Paints a rusty line down the center. She lets out a little squeak of excitement. This is amazing! What? Red? Not red. There's a million dirty little rusties swarming all over this city. I'm drowning in red. This is crimson. It's incredible. You must be some sort of mutant. You're really lucky I found you instead of the- Was that a reference to Homestuck? Well, I guess this whole game is a reference to Homestuck, so like... 
What am I saying? <laughs> lucky you? <laughs> yes, very lucky. <laughs> the luckiest. Though your arm is healed and you're out of whatever diversely weird weather happens on this planet. Maybe Amicia is right. Maybe you are lucky. You close your eyes and try to breathe. Send yourself out. Really send to yourself from your own body and all that garbage. You, then you open your eyes and you're sure you aren't centered anymore. In fact, you roll completely to the left as you try to get away from Amicia who is back and standing over you with a gigantic axe. Watch out! Amicia grabs you, drags you back into the couch and plants her hand on, the, on your solar plexus, effectively pinning you down. You'll hurt yourself if you keep flopping around like a beach blubber beast. You want to be friends, don't you? You want to help me with my artistic aspirations, right? You get the feeling she might be trying to manipulate you. Just the tiniest little suspicion. It's possible Amizia has recognized your intense craving for companionship and is trying to exploit it. You don't like being suspicious of a new friend, but that's a pretty big axe. I don't know what's, what got you so worried. I just want to show you my axe. Of course. Makes sense. It, it is a really nice axe. You, you hold out your hand f for it, but of course it is too heavy for you and your arms are all sweaty and you fumble it. Fumble the really sharp weapon. Misa tries to catch it before it's too late and somehow all they really struggle where you end up getting cut. Like, very corrupt. Across both of your- yeah. In fact, you don't think you, she could have aimed even better if she tried. Oh, dear. I hard agree. Don't struggle. You only hurt yourself more, Sally. You don't want that, do you? No, you definitely don't want that. Not after what a Butterfingers <laughs> you've proven to be. Amazing gets up to the X down. You're kind of loose track for, for a while. You're bleeding all over her couch and everything around you starts to go shiny and unreal. She comes back with a couple little jars that she uses to catch your blood. That's a good idea. You're sure you're making a mess. You wonder if they are specifically blood jars. They look like jam jars. Alien jam. Space jam. <laughs> God, you love that movie. <laughs> It's been so long since you've seen it. Definitely the best PG movie about basketball. Way better than the one with the dog and the clown. Do they even have basketball here? You ask Amicia. She just shushes you and brushes your hair back to your fore off your forehead. She keeps smiling and keeps sense comforting things. God, she's such a good friend. Before too long, you, you do what's honest a goddamn shock you haven't done now. You pass out. <laughs> When you come to you, you popped up against a wall in a weird way they wouldn't have loved even if you were an inv invalid. Both of your arms are jammed to the hole in the wall. Med hole. The glory hole of OP. <laughs> the magic sprint. <laughs> you grab to pull your arms back out. They're healed. The cut of your are just two faded pink lines. You take a step of the wall and effectively hit the ground. You may not be effectively dying anymore, but did you lose like half the blood in your body? Gosh, you're tired. Oh god, what the fuck was that? Little giggle makes you turn around or roll over since you saw on the floor and I'm not absolutely getting in time to. It's fine. You've seen worse floors in your life. Amicia sitting on one of her easels, her hair pulled back or beneath a scarf and little round glasses perched on her nose. A drop of your blood sits next to her as you watch as she, as she drips a blood brush in. I'm glad you're awake. I was a little worried I actually killed you back there. She laughs and you laugh along with her. It's very funny. Actually, everything's funny right now. It's probably the blood loss. You ask her what she's painting. You, of course. You inspired me. <laughs> well, right now it looks like a bunch of red squiggles and some lines, but she only just got started. She's warming up. She sits there on her stool, looking at her palette and chewing on her lip thoughtfully. She looks looks somewhat nervous. Actually, I want to show you something. Something I've never shown anyone else. She leaves from her stool and crosses the studio. You roll to the other side to keep her in line of sight. It's really hope she isn't getting another space jam jar. <laughs> she starts turning around the canvas one by one. They're all blank, except for one, which has a little... Wait, no. That's just a shadow. Every single one of them is blank. You're not sure you understand. You ask her if there was all new canvas that she got, not gotten the chance to paint on yet. Macy sighs. No, I have I have had them forever. I'm just not a real painter. There, I said it. She buries her face in her hands, talking from between her fingers. I'm really good at all the other parts. The materials in the studio, I can even make all my own paints. I just never do the actual sitting down and doing art part. She looks so despondent. You wish she could do something, but you can't really call that much about art, and you can't really stand up yet. You tell her she looks like she's moving in the right direction, at least. You don't even have a studio or brushes or stuff like that. Of course, you have a nice brush. You paid her, but you leave that part out. That's just it. I feel inspired for the first time ever. I think it has to do with your messed up, disgusting mutant blood. There's actually no real explanation. She takes a knee beside you, picking up on your limp. Hands with hers, they're cold, like she's been pressing them in the glass window in winter. Usually, I just finish off my contributors quickly. 
I don't have time to deal with a bunch of injured blood bloods moaning around my studio. But it couldn't just use your blood up all at once. You're far too special for that. You gaze at Amicia. A mist has ascended over your vision. It's even the mist of imminent death. <laughs> I have to keep this precious blood safe. I think you might be my muse. <laughs> you will never escape. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Very nice. Very nice. Very nice. Friends. You inspired a struggling artist. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> nice. Nice, nice. So yeah, that was more hype swap. I think it was just a fun little episode I wanted to do. So yeah. Anyway, I still don't have a catchphrase. So anyway, see y'all later. See ya, see you later. Okay then, bye.